Hello, my name is Dr. Yobugataya and I'm a lecturer at the University of Birmingham. Today's course is about the approaches in psychology. What we're going to be talking about and comparing is the different approaches to understanding psychology going through the humanistic approach, the biologic approach, the cognitive approach, the psychodynamic approach, and the biological approach. It must be pointed out that these lectures can be watched in a standalone fashion, with the exception of the final one, which is a kind of a summary and comparison comparison of various things. Now, this is because we know that you might have already seen other courses, and those other courses may be useful because you've already seen and understood those sorts of information. You just want to fill in the gaps of your understanding of a particular approach. But to start, let's talk about what an approach is, and then in this very same lecture we'll also be talking about the psychodynamic approach. An approach in effect is just basically a collection of evidence and theories that suggest a particular set of assumptions about what makes people do what they do and when they do it, and what we should focus on in terms of study, and how we can find out more information about people overall. There's debate to this day about what approach is best in what context, but I'm going to try to give a balanced approach on these views. To help explain these approaches, I'll start with the context in which they came about, so it gives you an understanding of what they were working with, uh, an explanation of their fundamental assumptions, their key areas of use, and their method of study, and as well as their strengths and weaknesses for you to kind of think about. We'll start with psychodynamic, as I mentioned before, because it's the one that most people have heard of. When you watch anything on TV, you always have the same sort of... Uh, Freudian dude explaining things in a way that looks more like the psychodynamic approach. Now, the psychodynamic approach was the brainchild of Sigmund Freud. Uh, Freud was a neurologist by trade. He was born in 1856, and his main area of research and study was uh, neuropsychopathology as a medical doctor. That's actually what he was, a MD. Through his practice, though, he noticed that some patients who had psychological disturbances of some sorts, basically got better when they talked through information on, through, their hypno, through hypnosis, which was at the time a huge fad. Um, some of the things that they pointed out were traumas that they had kind of repressed and not talked about with anyone else. Uh, and these are things that the person themselves was not fully conscious of, according to Freud. This led him to believe that issues and personality came from repressed desires and repressed memories and thoughts and feelings. So the psychodynamic approach argued that, uh, as it was originally created by Freud, that you can understand people's behavior, their feelings, and their thoughts by understanding their early experiences and how they shape conscious and unconscious motivations. In Freud's view, Psychopathology was linked to inner conflict, people from within basically having issues, and these uh, conflicts are, are, are mostly unconscious. People don't really know about them, according to Freud. These repressed emotions, drives, and behaviors are the cause of all the issues people have. Many of these conflicts came from the three psychological parts of a person, which he actually called psychic energies. Uh, the id, which is largely unconscious, or focusing on the drives people have. You have the superego, which is about someone's moral values, that uh, it's basically a, uh, someone's conscience, and this is mostly conscious. And you also have the ego, which is the reality drive, according to, to Freud, which is about being rational, which acts as the manager between the superego and the id. And they pull between each other. People's behavior, in this case, is a function of these things competing with each other, and a lot of these the misfunctioning occurs because people have these early childhood experiences that are, that are drawn through to the present. Their main area of study was mostly looking at clinical patients, people who had some issues that were coming that required them to come to therapy, and taking a look at case reports, individuals, particularly the mentally ill, were the main area of analysis that they used to extrapolate out to the rest of the population. And their method of study was mostly individual case studies. So Freud would publish these reports on individual people and their, their issues and then provide that to the world. The strength of the psychodynamic approach is that it does recognize that not everything is under the knowledge of the patient. That is, 
Uh, if an pr individual doesn't necessarily know why they have those issues that they have, then it means that we need to be able to dig deeper into finding out exactly why they have those, those thoughts, feelings, and patterns of behavior. Freud was also arguably the founder of talking therapy, which is really important, suggesting that you can make changes to psychopathology through conversation. Uh, he was also right in a lot of ways in inspiring attachment theory. That is, it's true that how our parents show us love does affect our behavior in romantic relationships. Now, the, the weaknesses to this are numerous, but the most significant, I would say, is that you cannot empirically test many of the, the assumptions that psychodynamic approaches have. It claims to be scientific, but one of the most important parts of science is the idea that you can make a theory that can be falsified. But in Freud's perspective, a lot of the things that are, are posited can't really be falsified. The presence of the id, the ego, and the superego, those are really hard to find and justify. Um, how can you test an unconscious drive? There is, it's very difficult to do so, especially if the person doesn't know it themselves. Even though Freud's sense of style, Freud's uh, lecturing methods, Freud's constant discussions on different things were excellent, the fact is uh, a lot of the stuff that he has presented just doesn't hold up to scientific scrutiny. I mean, you've definitely heard a lot of the things that come from psychodynamic approach. Ah, being anal retentive is one of the examples. Someone who really, really cares about organization. You've probably heard about repression, suppression. You've talked about, um, about maybe even displacement. You've talked about, you've heard a lot of these things that come from Freudian perspectives. And plus, like, I mean, speaking as a lecturer myself, of course, like, I mean, that style is what we all aspire to, that Freudian style of dude holding a cigar and dressing really well. But that's neither here nor there. His ideas were also a product of his time. He was quite sexist. Um, like, I mean, you may have heard of the Oedipus drive. Uh, he wasn't sure about the Electra drive, which is basically the idea that all little girls want to sleep with their fathers. Uh, and Freud was, however, very adamant of the idea that all boys want to sleep with their mothers. Probably not true. There's very little evidence as well that even with his crown jewel, psychodynamic therapy, Comparative therapies, the comparative analyses of these therapies of different types usually rank psychodynamic at the bottom, suggesting that it's not as much, uh, it's not as good as other perspectives. Uh, it can inform a lot of information, but it probably isn't great. Um, and it's not understanding personality to therapy. So maybe we need something a little bit more, sci uh, more scientific, something we can go out and test the hypothesis of these for.